Hey guys, Eric here. And in this video, we have to talk about this news about Bob Iger and Disney staying woke. <laughs> okay. There's a battle at the top of the Disney mountain for control to be CEO of the biggest entertainment company in the world, Disney, Marvel and Star Wars and all that stuff. It happened between Bob Iger and Nelson Peltz. Now, this is something I've talked about on live streams. I've done videos on my other channel about this. Anyway, talked about this before. Um, and apparently Disney is going to stay woke because 94% of the shareholders voted to keep Bob Iger in, sending the activist packing, which is Nelson Peltz, who uh, was a anti-woke activist. It was like the battle of, I guess, semi-woke versus anti-woke because Bob Iger already had some criticism. We know what happened during the strikes, okay? But he's been struggling to sort of rebuild Disney as a company since the lockdowns because Bob Chappett came in and just greenlit everything to try and make the company profitable uh, because we weren't seeing movies and movie theaters and things like that. I don't know what I would have done, to be honest, in that position. Anyway, there's been a mess between the two of them. But look, I don't feel any sympathy for Bob Iger. These guys have the good life. So I'm not mad about it at all. <laughs> it's like, you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, in this video, he's talking about the woke criticism. A lot of people don't understand what it really means. Do y'all understand what woke means? Give me your definition of woke in the comments. I want to know what everybody thinks woke means. For me, we'll, we'll talk about what I think it means when we get down there. Anyway, we have a couple of segments here that I highlighted. It says, uh, this is talking about whether or not uh, it was personal when Peltz was going up against him for the seat to be head of Disney. Uh, if you're asking whether it's personal on their side, you probably should ask him. He probably would say no. I think there probably was, to some extent, a degree of personal animus that was on the table here, Iger replied. And that's because apparently there was an alignment with Ike Perlmutter, who was somebody that was not good for Marvel. A lot of the really bad Marvel shit that we got came from Ike. Ike's also somebody that prevented a lot of the really good movies from coming out. So there was a lot of issues. So this was like Ike Perlmutter with this person by proxy coming in to try and oust Bob Iger so he could have sort of some control over it. And then it says here, and when asked whether it was true that he was prepared to step down from Disney's board should Peltz win a seat, Iger said that his presence on the board, we believe, would be, a distra would be distracting and that might have made it very, very difficult for us to do our jobs the way we feel it needed to be done. So in other words, if he would have came in it would have disrupted everything. And based on his comments, let's let's talk about his comments. I'm paraphrasing here. So Nelson Peltz said, he was asking why we have so many women, why are all these women and, and all these black people in these movies? Like, that's basically what he was saying. Because he talked about like all women Marvel films, all black Marvel films. So this guy would have came in and just completely like cleared the board and started from the ground up, like trying to do stuff that was just, not diverse at all. Like this guy was an, an anti-woke activist. He would have taken the company back by years. And he goes on here to say, uh, people have been coming after me in the company for years, he added. This is uh, Bob Iger. I don't get distracted by those things, which is why he didn't really have much of a statement when he was talking about the strikes and people were calling him out on it. But Iger did seem to acknowledge that the critiques of Disney's content as being woke may have a certain degree of merit, though he added, the term woke is thrown around rather liberally, no pun intended in that regard. I think a lot of people don't even understand what it means. And I'm going to agree with that. So now I'm going to give my opinion on what my interpretation of woke means when we're talking about like this kind of stuff. And for me, in my experience, and trust me, I've had a lot of experience dealing with this, woke simply means diverse media. And people that have said, oh, it's about ideologies, about this, about that. To me, it is boiled down to simply being diverse because we're seeing people complaining now about Shala Ball, Silver Surfer as being woke when it's literally a character from the comics, been around since 1968, but for some reason, that means woke to people. Anyway, goes on here to say, and this is the part that I think is going to make a lot of the anti-woke people big mad. Tell me if this makes you mad in the comments. I'm wondering how many people are seething over this, right? So he says here, but generally speaking, we need to be an entertainment first company, which is what a lot of people liked about it. They're like, yes, entertainment first. Keep going here. And understanding that, look, we're trying to reach a very, very diverse audience. And on one hand, in order to do that, what you do, the stories you tell have to really reflect the audience that you're trying to reach. But that audience, reflect that audience. I'm, I'm sure people are like seething from that comment. But that audience, because they are so diverse, really, really first and foremost, they want to be entertained. And sometimes they, can be they can't be turned off by certain things. And we're just going to have to be more sensitive in the interest of a broad audience. It's not easy, you know. So we can't please everybody all the time, right? 
So I can tell you right now, I haven't seen the videos yet as of recording my video, but I bet you right now there are people out there in certain spaces here on YouTube that are really, really angry about this interview and the stuff that Bob Iger said here. Because I remember a while back when Bob Iger came in and was like, we're going to be entertainment first, no more activism, right? And here he's walking it back a bit. Let me tell you why I think he's walking it back a little bit. I think he's walking it back because the investors and the, the chair people decided to keep him on against somebody who was like anti-woke. So he sees the direction of the ship. These are people that know the finances of the company. They know where the money's going, where it's coming from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they're looking at this and they're going, we want somebody driving the ship that is going to focus on diverse content. That is why he's sticking around. He sees the writing on the wall. He knows that's where the paycheck is going to come from. So he is going to keep doing that. He's going to keep pushing that forward, regardless about the entertainment idea. But also I want to point out that he's not wrong. He's not wrong about the idea of entertainment and diversity being able to coexist. I think those two things absolutely can coexist together. I'm a huge proponent of that. I have been for a while. So for me, it's no big shock that he's going to try and make those things work and marry them together and uh, make Disney profitable through diversity, which for me, again, I have no issue with that. But some of y'all might. So let me know in the comments below. Does this bother you that, that Disney is going to stay woke? I am very curious if people are going to be uh, happy or mad about this. Like, Let me know in the comments below. I just want to know your opinions.